Hello, welcome to my channel. If this is the first time you're visiting, you should know that you're uh, watching this video because we are making a series where we can show you in quick steps how you can work your 3D management, your 3D workflow inside Blender all the way from zero until delivery. That means you are going to render your animation as well. And my name is Pierre Schiller and I am a Blender Foundation Certified Trainer. This way you can ask any kind of questions you would like in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them all. All right, so let's get started. Previously, we've seen how this uh, character was already created by sculpting, but now we need to stylize it some more. So let's go back here where our original face is. And now we're going to create a plane. I'm going to enter edit mode. I'm going to scale it and I am also going to add a modifier, which is a mirror modifier. Okay, so I'm going to move it in edit mode. I'm going to grab all four vertices and then I'm going to move it all the way over here. Immediately, I'm going to apply the mirror modifier and now I can see I have two um, exact sides for this object. And down here on viewport display, you're going to choose the color um, which you will be retopologizing your object with. And also up here on the panel, you're going to choose material. Therefore, the material is guided by what you have here on the viewport color instead of the material by itself. Then we're going to add a shrink wrap because we want to constrain whatever we're doing with the retopology to the original object and for that we're going to snap it uh, using shrink wrap and also the snapping tools to volume. We'll, we're going to see some of that later. Now let's go back into edit mode and then I am going to choose the poly build tool. And the way it works is simple, rather simple. You can select uh, vertices, you can select edges, and you can select faces to uh, create and edit their position because the ultimate goal here is to adapt uh, the new surface that we're going to be creating. But as you can see, if I move vertices without snapping, they are going to go and float away from the mesh. And what we want is them to stick to the surface of the object. Therefore, I'm going to activate snapping to surface. As you can see, now a ray is shot whenever you um, synchronize the surface with the vertex that you're uh, placing over the object. And that's very useful because that's how you know that it's perfectly aligned to the surface. Now if you take the polygon build tool, you're going to go into the side of each polygon or their edge and then it will automatically highlight. Then you can just drag with your left click mouse and a new face will be created. But as you can see, it also uh, floats away from the surface. And what you need to do is also apply the um, snapping tools and the options to surface. And therefore, you can then uh, continue to extrude. As actually, this is done automatically. You don't have to do anything except just click and drag, click and drag, click and drag and then you will be forming your first loop. And I particularly like to start always with the, with the eyes because the Oculus muscle, um, it's very important to define what the characteristics of this character will be like. And in this case, I'm going to switch back here to the, my selection tool. I'm going to select the two edges and then I'm going to press F. This will fill between the edges selected uh, this particular uh, polygon. So that's how you do, how, that's how you close your topology. So we can continue doing that or we can also uh, see how we can, you know, just select the loops by pressing Alt and then left click mouse and then you can press Ctrl R over any particular polygonal face because we want to create edge loops like you're seeing right here. I bid you to uh, research about the topic because it's very important that you have correct loops in the face. Although if you have triangles, it doesn't matter because sometimes you have to stylize stuff and therefore you would like to uh, you know, consolidate some of the vertices into lesser points. 
And for that, there is also a guide to reduce the polygonal faces. So it is very important to have this in mind while you model because um, you can also press the letter K for a knife and then start cutting uh, in between edges or right clicking and then selecting subdivide. And this way it will add a new vertex so you can join uh, always in quads. Always try to work in quads. It's best uh, practice whenever you're retopologizing a face like in this example. So you can select edges, press 2 to filter select edges. You can see all the time these uh, filter selections are going to be shifting because I uh, press 1 for vertices, 2 for edges, and 3 for faces. So right now I select all edges and then I press F to fill the faces. Now I'm going to select all of these with box select, Control B, and then I'm going to press S, X, and then 0 in the numpad. This will scale them and average them into a 0 average vertex. And that's how they get aligned. So we can continue with this process because it's nothing really um, difficult. But like I mentioned before, if you need to cut and make more loops or make uh, specific cuts in the vertices or the faces, you can just press the K um, key, which will give you the knife. Therefore, you can create uh, better flows with the, with the knife. Okay, so let's continue to create these faces for the polygonal faces for the nose and also the nose strills and it's really helpful whenever you have modifiers stacked in the correct order so that way mirror is uh, first to execute then the shrink wrap enters into action and Different uh, orders in the stack will cause different results. So make sure you have these in the correct order. So let's continue to create some more faces here. Now, a common practice that I like to do, I don't know, probably it's not your method, but I really like to draw first um, by selecting an edge and then extruding it. Or selecting a vertex and then extruding it, placing uh, the correct order between faces and edges. It's important to get this uh, common flow of the polygons in the face. So right now if I select for example a vertex and then I press E I can extrude it. It's basically like drawing exactly the way I want for example the mouth or the uh, ears. You will see this uh, in just a second. Um, which is basically an edge floating in the air. But then later on, I will uh, complete the faces, the polygonal faces, and so that the edge will make a crease or a valley, a peak or a valley, I'm sorry. So right here, we're completing the, the, the rest of the edge loop in the face. And you can continue to adjust this later we just want to get this as quick as possible and as you can see there there were some um, parts of the geometry that were shoot through the back of the head of this character and that was because the shrink wrap didn't know where to project that vertice that vertex I'm sorry I keep failing with that word <laughs> I apologize so anyways here we go see I drew to the back of the face near where the jawbone is and then I completed the rest of the polygons and right now I'm not using the poly 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 draw tool I'm just using manually um, vertex selection and also extruding so here we're almost done I'm just um, accelerating this process it took around probably two hours it's not that much Whenever you're retopologizing, if you already know your loop cuts, it's going to be pretty fast. So right here, as I was explaining, I like to extrude, 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 and then the last point, 
I select both points and then I press F. That way they get joined together or they get filled rather. And then I adjust my uh, ear shape right here and I need to create, of course, my peaks and my valleys. So let's just close this shape right here so I can get the basic first uh, volume, the external volume of the ear. And now I simply go subdividing and creating new faces inside the ear and that way I can just close it up with a single uh, uh, collapsed edge option. So if you press X whenever you're selecting edges, it will appear an option to collapse them all. And that's how you do that part. Now I'm going to select the, the eye loop, press E, S to scale, and then just like I mentioned before, X and then collide your edges and you will get this, this exactly. So the face is looking great. Right click, smooth, um, smooth shade and then also enter edit mode and then press shift N. This way the normals will get averaged and now you can see your face pretty much soft shaded. And let's check out the material. Alright, this is looking good. Here's the hair. And once we have our retopologized character, in this case the face, we're going to add a lattice. And in that lattice, we're going to um, select the face, add a lattice modifier, and pick our lattice. With that, we're going to enter into edit mode for the lattice, select some vertex, and start manipulating your face. So in our case, it's too, too roundy. It doesn't look like any character that would have any kind of appeal because everything is symmetrical. And just like I mentioned before in all of my other videos, um, symmetry is good for some parts, but we are not really 100% symmetrical. So the more imperfections you have from either face, from either side of the face, you know, having it um, equalized, the better. So don't miss out, the next video will be about rigging. And thank you very much for subscribing to my channel.